Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Suns got bulldozed in the first two games against the T-Wolves. Is there anything left in the tank to come back? Also, the Pacers made a statement as the series moves to Indy, and the Celtics are about to make short work of the Heat. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The Phoenix Suns were supposed to be a nightmare matchup for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So far for Phoenix, it's just kind of been a nightmare. They're now down 2-0 after losing game two, 105 93 in Minnesota. Brendan Clean from Locked On Suns joins me now. And, and Brendan, why hasn't the Suns uh, been the, the problem for Minnesota that many people thought they would be heading into this series? Sometimes, I mean, look, it's basketball, and I think it often comes down to the best players. And you would not have thought, based on the names and the reputations that are associated with them, Peter, that Rudy Gobert and... Carl Anthony Towns, although less so today, and Anthony Edwards would be the guys to play at or better of a level than the big three that the Suns went out of their way and traded so much to go get in Booker, Beal, and Durant. But Ant Edwards has killed them as both a scorer and a passer now across these games. Gobert has been far from this unplayable albatross big man that he is kind of known to be and Towns has had some nice moments as a scorer and and tonight their role players even looked better than anything the Suns could put out there so it has just been a top to bottom kind of dismantling and the Suns ability to kind of go at Gobert and and score where they wanted has gone away Anthony Edwards has solved the defensive scheme that really confused them and him and and they just look like a team that at least in Minnesota you know home team hasn't lost a game I guess we'll we'll keep that going but they have just looked like uh pretty lost as a result of all of that and, and so what is it going to take for for the the big three I suppose um but but certainly Booker and Durant to get going in this series well I think Booker is frankly I mean he is getting pretty overwhelmed by Jaden McDaniels as his primary matchup defender. You've seen him have pockets where, you know, tonight it was on switches against Carl Anthony Towns at times, or, you know, here and there in transition, maybe a little bit of room to shoot a three. But when it is just kind of operating one-on-one against McDaniels in a pick and roll or off of a pin down screen or anything, it's not really happening. He's not really willing to attack the basket against Gobert. And that doesn't leave you a lot of spaces to go to work in. A lot of things have to line up for Booker to feel comfortable scoring right now. And that's just not going to happen in a playoff environment against the number one defense in the NBA. I mean, I think Durant, we know how he can make pretty much any shot that comes his way, but he is a kind of finishing type of player right now. And and maybe they can get him some more shots. Maybe there's some credence to the idea that hey, he's been pretty efficient across two games. He's been pretty effective playing his game. Maybe you run through that a little bit more, but um, you're not going to have him be, you know, what Anthony Edwards is doing over there, orchestrating for possession after possession. That's not really Durant's game. So somebody's going to have to step up as that creator, breaking down the defense and and actually kind of setting things up, and they're not able to do that right now. Yeah, and there's a difference between just playing and and – you know, being a part of what the, the action, the usage rate, all those those questions. But Kevin Durant played 41 minutes. Uh, Bradley Beal played 42. Devin Booker played 42. These guys can't play much more than they're playing. This was supposed to be the, the concept, right? That was the, that was the idea. Just like the bench, that stuff doesn't matter in the postseason. These guys are playing, and you're still going. Uh, where do we where do we turn? Where do we turn for offense? That was not supposed to be a problem for the Phoenix Suns. No. And I mean, look, there are a lot of things you can point to aside from them. You know, Yusuf Nurkic has been a pretty reliable playmaker. He has been pretty bad just flat out across two games in this series and and not been a playmaker hub at all for them because of the presence of Gobert and the length inside to find the cutters and kind of downhill scoring that he was able to free up. That's not there. And when that's not there, then they don't get the ball out to their shooters. Grayson Allen goes down in this game, just as he did in the last game with the same ankle, getting twisted twice. 
you know, it does start to add up. It's just, it obviously starts from the place you're identifying. And yeah, a team that put up 120 with ease against this Minnesota defense felt like they had cracked a code against this Timberwolves team, forcing everybody to pick them and, and be pretty, pretty, uh, clear headed with that pick. I mean, it felt unanimous, Peter, and now uh, not so much. So yeah, the Suns uh, have to hope that home court does them some good, I think. Stay up to date all year on the Phoenix Suns by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Suns on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, some say a playoff series doesn't begin until the road team wins a game. If that's the case, then Pacers Bucks just got going. Before we get to that, the Mavericks had a shot to even the series with the Clippers before heading back to Big D. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is mm, its not looking good. You're feeling low. Not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep. You lift your head up and you say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, and take as much money from your friends as you possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go. They let you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Dallas Mavericks had a shot to even the series with LA before heading home. That have pushed this team and led this team and been great leaders and we've been so complimentary for them to look that way in the first half of game one. To dig themselves into such a hole where they only score eight points in a quarter. To yeah. then come out in this game. And it wasn't just offensively. And we'll talk about their offense. We'll talk about their big buckets and all that. To me, defensively, those two guys just put such just put such an emphasis on that end that those two guys have felt like took that mantle, took that responsibility to say, hey, to guard this Clippers team, especially with Kawhi Leonard back, you've got to defend all five positions. There is no hiding on anybody, really, in this yeah. Clippers lineup. And we knew this, and especially with Kawhi Leonard, there's really no hiding on anybody. Yeah. And Kawhi, or then Luka and Kyrie really stepped up in this moment. I want, yeah, because I want to, I mean, we did rail on Luca and Kyrie, and I want to give a huge shout out to Luca specifically because he got a lot of pushback. And look, I mean, this is what happens in the playoffs is people start watching teams that they have not watched at any point during the regular right. season. That's just how it's always going to go. And the prevailing narrative is, oh, well, they don't play defense and Luca doesn't try on defense, despite the fact that that's not been at all the case over the back three, four months it's, of the season. It's true sometimes, but not, oh, no, not, every, not every game. He's not Trey Young out there. Right, right, right. I mean, it's been true in the past, but over the last three or four months, this <laughs> right. is not the basketball team that people are used to when it comes to the Dallas Mavericks. Philadelphia 76ers guard Tyrese Maxey has been named the most improved player in the NBA. Maxey had a breakthrough season with the Sixers, averaging career highs in points, rebounds, assists, and steals, as well as three-pointers made. He also became an all-star for the first time as he transitioned into playing point guard full-time. He beat out Chicago Bulls guard Kobe White and Houston Rockets center, Alperin Shangoon. The NBA and Denver police are looking into an incident in which a man reported to be a brother of Nuggets star Nikola Jokic was seen hitting a fan after Denver's dramatic 101-99 victory over the Lakers in the NBA playoffs. In videos shared by TMZ, the man is seen climbing over seats to confront another person at Ball Arena. He then punches that fan in the face. An NBA spokesperson said Tuesday that the league is looking into the matter. I wonder how people would react if that was, say, an Antetokounmpo brother. And on the diamond, the Chicago Cubs added to the early season misery of the Houston Astros, but may have lost a key bat to injury in Cody Bellinger. It's on a day in which the Cubs made a flurry of roster moves. We have a lot to get to in the show. Sam, a lot of activity in Cubs land Tuesday, and we're going to get to it all. 
Yeah, it just there there isn't really many rest days with this group. Uh, this this was one of the more I would say action packed storyline days of the season. Believe it or not, uh, it started out early, uh, which we'll get to uh, all the oh, is Mervis is up? Who's hurt? Whatever. Hap comes back. Some guys go to the IL. I mean, first of all, fantastic win uh, on on uh, Tuesday night, which I'm sure yeah. we'll get to. But for me. The lead, uh, the lead is Cody Bellinger's injury. We just got a quick counsel qu- quote on that for those that missed it. Cody Bellinger uh, ran into the wall. I wouldn't call it a crash into a wall, but I think he, he ran into the wall. He hit his ribs on the wall, left um, left the game, uh, and and it's being called a rib contusion. X-rays were negative, but counsel said they're going to see how he is tomorrow before they could determine the severity on that. Um, I almost knocked my headphones off. I think that um, the goal here, you got, you cannot have another major guy go to the IL. Uh, it, it, it is really becoming crazy. Um, and it really kind of was a sour note on what I thought was a beautiful performance from the Cubs. They jumped out on JP France early Bellinger yeah. Bellinger, who, not only you know you don't want to lose, but it's starting to swing the bat very well, hit a monster home run. Mike Talkman, star of the game with two home runs. Jordan Wicks, maybe his best start, you know, considering the opponent ever. Uh, he went six innings, allowed two earned, but one of those really should have been unearned. Uh, theoretically, Bellinger lost the ball in the lights. Uh, ben Brown was good out of the pen. Almonte was good out of the pen. So you know, it was a really kind of complete, awesome performance on Tuesday night. Just um, you know barred with the uh, Bellinger stuff. Damian Lillard started out game two, just like he started out game one. But in the second half, the Indiana Pacers were too much coming in wave. They scored 30 in every quarter of this game. And they pull away from the Bucks, 125, 108. Tony East is at Pfizer Forum from Locked On Pacers. He joins me now. And, and Tony, the second half in particular, it felt like the Pacers really were able to put their foot on the gas in this one. What changed really in the second half, but but from game one to game two as well? Yeah, I felt like they could do no wrong offensively in the second half, and you noted they were you know in the 30s every quarter, but the balance of their offense was a key change, right? And they, they made the, the no-fun adjustment for fans. They made shots. They missed the first 13 threes <laughs> they took in the first game. Sometimes that's the easy adjustment. Just make them this time. They shot a lot better from deep 44%, but in the second half, the ball was moving really well, and the gravity that you know taking two guys to defend Tyrese Halliburton or sometimes Pascal Siakam can can have on a team. Twenty two points for Miles Turner, much better than Game One from an efficiency perspective for him. Andrew Nemhard, who's defending Damian Lillard on one end, twenty points on eight for eleven shooting. Those two stepping up and adding key contributions from role guys. Plus another great game from Pascal Siakam. At the Pacers were consistently scoring, so even the Bucks runs were met with met with baskets by the Pacers, and they needed that. They didn't have that in the in the first half when the Bucks went up thirty and game one and they had a response this time all night hey you mentioned the ball was moving a franchise playoff record 38 assists on 50 made i didn't even know that all right look at that that. is wild um and and you mentioned andrew nemhart um he he, 20 in this game averages nine for the season those are the kind of contributions you need to steal a playoff game on the road i want to ask you about the defense though tony because this was a, a pacers team that you know, there were games where they were getting up 150 points. Um, <laughs> that has not been the case. Um, at, at least it wasn't in game two when in, in, for parts of this game, the Bucks could not get off good looks. Yeah, say what you want about what the Pacers offense can or can't be in this series, but 108 allowed in the first game. That should have been enough to win or could have been enough to win given what this Pacers team has been all season 109 tonight. Uh, clearly taking positive steps on the defensive end. The addition of Siakam's helped them a lot. Everybody thought of them rightfully as a sieve, given how bad they were defensively earlier in the season. But Siakam at the four just means Neesmith isn't guarding guys who are six inches taller than him, and Nemhard can defend guards now. And so they got better and better throughout the season as they kind of ironed out their rotation. I think they were a little above average for the last basically month of the regular season, and that's the regular season. But the fact that they showed progress at all was meaningful because they were still scoring so much. And then this game showed exactly what that looked like for them. 
a lot of the time down the stretch of the regular season when they got big wins over Miami, Dallas, whoever, to get into the postseason. It was because they had games like this where the defense reaches the needed level just to keep them in it. And then they have stretches where their offense is the Pacers offense, where Halliburton's passing is brilliant or Siakam's scoring is unstoppable. I mean, there are stats that Siakam's the first to do X, Y, Z since Will Chamberlain, which is always very cherry picked. But that's how good he's been. And you meant the defense is really what ignites it all for them. They can play in transition and be their best that way. And it was really good again in this game, two in a row for them on that end. Yeah, and that seems like a weird thing to say when Damian Lillard has 34 um, <laughs> and and got wherever he wanted to on the floor, the floor in the first half. But it did seem like over the course of the game, the pressure that they put on the ball with Damian Lillard, the, the full court press at times, or just picking him up, you know, 90 feet and saying, we're going to make you work for every look that you get. It felt like it, it wore on him. I mean, he didn't have to do it in the second half of game one, but in game two, we didn't see... Um, the, the, the same sort of attacking Dame because the Pacers seem to have worn him down. Absolutely. Right. At 35 in the first half of game one, zero in the second half. Right. And tonight, I don't know the exact splits immediately, but similar that he was much hotter and more effective from a scoring perspective early in the game. And you could see kind of what the Bucks were thinking in the second half where as Dame's wearing down. Well, if Andrew Nemhart's still going to be holding his jersey no matter where he's standing, let's try to play four on four and use that spacing to our advantage elsewhere. Sometimes that worked, right? Chris Middleton had some of those buttery mid-range shots he can hit, and Bobby Portis had some nice moments, but their offense isn't as effective when Dame doesn't have the ball all the time. But he, at his age, it's hard to do that for uh, um. Teen, you know, umpteen minutes per game. And so, yeah, he had 38 or 34, excuse me. He was scoring really well. His efficiency was where it needed to be. That's how they won the first game was him scoring basically at that level. But, you know, the, his minutes did not go the same in the second half. His defense is wobbly because it takes a lot to score at that level that fast. And while he's still good, the Pacers were better on him. And over a course of a game can kind of wear him down. It worked in this one and is a consequence of not having Giannis, certainly for the Bucs. Day up to date, all year on the Indiana Pacers by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Pacers on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, the Celtics are about to make short work of the Heat. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, some pun intended. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can also combine the prop bets into a same-game parlay for an even bigger payout. It is the NBA playoffs, and one team is an underdog by over two touchdowns. You heard me. FanDuel has the Celtics favored over the Heat tonight by 14 and a half, like dog walk levels. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Playoff Jimmy hasn't appeared. The Miami Heat have been crazy and consistent all season, and the Boston Celtics are ready to send them packing. As Locked On Celtics host John Corrales points out. Considering this series is probably going to be over in four or five. I'm just saying if they play, and we'll, we'll cover this in the second set in the third segment here, watching that again, I have even more confidence than I did after, after the game in person, watching it on video. Cause when you watch it on video, you get to see the whole floor and you, the spacing just hits you, smacks you right in yeah. the face. Like, damn, the Celtics had the, with their spacing got, anything they wanted offensively so yep you can get their cardio up here but they're probably going to be having a few days off to wait so it's all going to go away anyway if this were a different team i might feel differently if the celtics were playing any other eight seed the bulls the hawks they might let one of these go they might let go of the rope they're not going to do that against a heat team that sent them home last year in the Eastern Conference Finals. That has been a bugaboo to every top seed in the Eastern Conference over the last few years. This is not the team to play with, and everyone knows that. It's arguably the best coach in the game, and a team that even without Jimmy Butler performing at playoff Jimmy levels is extremely, extremely dangerous. We've seen it happen. If it were any other team, I might say, okay, maybe a gentleman's sweep. I think this is a sweep because I think the Celtics stay focused in all these games. And I just don't think the Heat are very good. And finally, 
Kaitlin Clark in setting records. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. The Indiana Fever made her the number one overall pick, and now Nike is backing up the Brinks truck. Or maybe it's a Nike truck. Clark signed a $28 million contract that spans eight years and includes a signature shoe. This will be the richest sponsorship contract for a women's basketball player ever. Can't imagine she's done setting records either. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, we get you ready for what to expect from the NFL draft. So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.